Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and today I want to talk about a topic that I've had a few questions come in. On having problems with your buckets or your totes draining. Some of you have set it up just perfect right off the bat and it just doesn't drain and some of them have been sitting for let's say a year and they don't drain. If you go back and check my videos, you'll see that what I do on the bottom of my buckets and my totes is I load it up with a lot of wood matter. You know, branches and stuff I've picked off the yard and around the yard, I should say. I load that in there and what it does, it creates a big space, even though it's all going to break down the soil. Space that as water comes down through a bucket or a tote or any container, it gets to the bottom and it will drain out the holes, whether the holes are on the bottom or on the side. So if it gets caked up in there and it turns into like clay, we have clay soil. Well, at that point, it won't drain anymore. It becomes like clay, just hard and you'll end up with a lake. That's what you don't want. That's why I like loading the bottom of my containers full of big chunky stuff. Now, if your soil is not that good, and it could be potting soil or garden soil some people are mixing in and using, it can cake up. If it cakes up and starts to hold the water and block any other water coming down, you could do the same thing and then you can rot out your plants. You may not even know it. So instead of it draining and slowly draining out, it's just creating an underground river that you don't want. Now it won't matter whether the holes are on the bottom or on the side. What does matter is that it does drain. It has to drain. So let's say you set up a new container and you've watered it and it doesn't drain. So there's a couple things. It could be the soil you're using and it could be of course that it's just waterlogged. It doesn't, you've got something on the bottom that's not letting the water drain out. That is not going to work. Maybe on a hot day, the plant will suck it up, but it's really not going to work. Here's what I can do. I do as well if I don't have a lot of chunky stuff. Tool. Now, I've told you we don't throw away old tool. You find tool laying around that you've used and it's old. What you can do is on your buckets, your totes, wherever you're growing, you can load this on the bottom. So you load all your old tool by the drain holes. All right. So now, as the water gets down there, even if it starts to cake, a lot of water will still seep through this. This is a netting type material. It will seep through and still drain out. This is why I said don't throw tool away. That's one of the reasons. You want to make sure everything is draining. Analyze how you're filling your totes. I know a lot of us are trying to fill it to save money on soil. You can use peanut type material, the styrofoam down there. By wrapping the peanuts up in tool, this will keep small particles from going to the holes and blocking it up. So you should get really good drainage that way too. Wrap your peanuts or your styrofoam in tool so when you go to change it, you want to change out the tote, you can lift it out. Otherwise, you'll have pieces of foam everywhere. It doesn't break down, but it will still break up as you're trying to remove it. What you want to do is make sure that nothing on the bottom, especially the bottom, has a clay type material. So if you can, collect branches, collect things around the yard. If you use newspaper or shredded paper on the very bottom, that will create, think of paper mache. As the water works it through, it creates kind of a coating and it will act like clay. So you wanna put on the bottom either a really good potting mix, and if you get a good potting mix, that will drain, or you wanna put tool or you want to put chunks of wood. It doesn't matter how big, you can put big chunks of wood, just so the holes are never completely blocked. Now I'm sure there's ways, if you look at it, analyze it. You could load it with rocks, but then you're really making your thing heavy. If you load it with rocks for good drainage, which is good, try to put something on the top like tool, because this way you won't get soil built up around the rocks and it will still drain through. That's why I said peanuts, you can do the same thing. I just went throw the styrofoam peanut straight in there because from experience, if you take everything out, you want to move it or you want to freshen up the soil or do something, you're going to have peanuts everywhere. And that's what you don't want. That's why you want to wrap it in tool. This does not break down under soil. Under soil, when you open this up and you take this, all the soil out, 
you'll have tool looking the same way pretty much as the day you put it in. So if you're having a drainage problem, analyze what you put in there. And it's, you know, if you have to, just take it all out, put it in another container, put it in different buckets and start over. It's not going to be that big of a deal. It's not going to really disrupt anything except your plants. Once you have plants, then you're going to have to find the holes. Now, a lot of times, you know, you'll have to start over. If my holes are in the front and I've had that problem, let's say it's a tote and the holes are in the front. What I can do at that point is just dig to the holes. Just remove a lot of soil around the holes. Make sure the holes are not blocked. You put tiny holes. That's why I try to make my holes a little elongated in totes and containers. If they get blocked with little pieces of wood chips or rocks and stuff, it will block the water too. I clear the holes out and then I put tool or pieces of wood and stuff to help. And that works. Leaves are okay too, but then leaves will break down. I mean, it all returns to the earth. It all returns to soil. And if it gets too mucky, then it will do the same thing. It could block. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, a lot of times I've got every tote in my chair garden has never blocked. Go figure. What's in there? I had some with styrofoam. I had some with the chunks of wood I collected. I had leaves and different things, whatever I felt on the bottom. And none of them, none of them blocked up. So you may not have the problem. A lot of you are saying, well, I've never had that problem. That's because it doesn't always happen. But when it does happen, that's when you want to analyze. So the main thing is maybe make your buckets where you have access to the holes. So if you had your holes here, you could just maybe get in there with a shovel and just get to the holes, unblock your holes, and then stuff in some tool or maybe some chunks of wood and bark and stuff like that, and then put it all back. So there's different methods like that. I hope I've given you an idea on that. And then again, if you're using garden soil, that can happen too. The garden soil might just absorb all the water, swell up, and then you have just a block of like clay almost, you know, it's just all swollen. Sand is good because sand will run the water right through. So you could also put sand on the bottom, a good gritty sand, and then cover it with tools so the soil doesn't get in through the sand and then block your holes. Holes like this generally, that big, this is just from the nursery, they won't block up because they're so big. So think about it. that's a little bit too big. I try to make my holes in one special place because I want to retain water on the bottom. So I usually make them higher. Water on the bottom is okay. Water on the top not draining down is not good. If it takes about five minutes or so to drain down, but it does drain, then you're okay. But if you go back a couple hours later and there's still water on the top, you need to just clean that up, fix it up where it drains better. So at least you've got water flowing through, not sitting there and creating a pond or a lake. Because that, we are not growing vegetable plants that like that much water, except for celery. Celery likes a lot of water, but it doesn't want to sit in water. Lettuce likes a lot of water, but still, it has to have some sort of drainage. So think about it. Look at your conditions on how you set it up. And then maybe you just have to tweak a little something and then continue on your way. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.